Hi everyone, it's Tom Mackey here. Now we've posted quite a few videos now and just to prove to you that we do read your comments, there have been several comments about how to make images pop. So we're gonna do a short video today on just that. So everyone thinks it's all about post-processing, but there's so much more that goes into an image. So starting with field technique and the elements that you have in the field, there's so much more important than just the post-processing. First thing to consider is light and composition. The usual thing, but getting these two elements to work in harmony together. So this is a consideration that you need to make before you even leave the house. So checking things like where you're gonna shoot, the best time of the day, the weather conditions. These are all considerations that you need to make. Now the subject matter, uh, it always helps if you choose something that has a really dynamic um, element, such as a silhouette, graphic shapes. So these are all things that will help an image pop. Let me give you a real world example. So take this tree here that I shot in Tuscany. Uh, I went out there during a clearing storm and I wanted this really strong shape uh, of a silhouette of this tree. So I filled the frame with it. There's no point making it small in the frame. I wanted to have this dynamic shape with this stormy sky behind it. Now the sun is gonna uh, appear right here in the corner. So one thing when you're shooting in the field, you've got to make sure that you cover all of your bases with um, your field technique. Make sure you capture enough information in your highlights and in your shadows if needed. Something like this, I didn't really want shadow detail on this. I wanted this strong silhouette shape. So let me take you through this of how I have this image now captured in camera but then taking it through to the post-processing to make the image pop. So in this image here of the tree, I used a grad over the tree because uh, I don't really need the information in the tree. I want a strong silhouette. You don't always have to have detail everywhere in a shot because when you, when you look at a shot like this, you've got the sun behind the tree, it's naturally going to be a silhouette. But what I wanted to capture is the detail in the sky around the tree. So. Let's start off with uh, a raw file, and I'm going to apply a preset that I use. And that will get us 85% there. So already, that's really improved. So what I've done here is I've added some contrast, about 30, 31 points contrast. I brought the highlights down, the shadows up. It's the usual thing. I'm flattening out the image as much as possible and then um, I'm working out little details from there to make it pop. So uh, the whites, I've added uh, 25 points to that, brought the blacks down. Uh, now saturation, this is an issue that, you now a lot of people might think all you have to do is just whack your saturation slider up and your images are gonna pop. It doesn't work that way. Your colors start going really weird then um, now, I don't normally add any more than, say, five, rarely any more than eight points of saturation. And on this, um, the preset that I've made here, I'm adding five points saturation. The vibrancy, you can get a little bit more, um, you can be a little bit more liberal with that because it's only acting on the unsaturated pixels in the image. And on this, uh, I've added 17 points vibrancy. So already it's looking really good. So right now I'm going to take this into Photoshop and I'm on a Mac so I'm hitting Command E for a shortcut and that opens it up. Okay we're open now and there's a few things here that I want to just retouch out real quick. There's some flare. So spot healing brush is a little bit flare there, there, some dust spots up in here. And that looks pretty good. Okay, now there is something that I use. I use Nick. Um, it's gone through changes over the years. It was um, bought up by Google for a while and offered free. Then recently, DxO have bought it from Google, and which is great because they're going to start supporting it and hopefully adding new features. So we'll talk a little bit more about Nick in a future video, though. But for right now, I'm going to go into Color Effects Pro, open the image in that. And what it's going to do, it's going to, it's going to start with the last filter that I use, 
which is usually Pro Contrast. There's a few filters I use in here, Pro Contrast, uh, Skylight, Brilliance and Warmth usually. So we'll start with Pro Contrast and you have this slider up here, this correct color cast. Now, as I'm shooting a sunset here, I don't really wanna correct the color cast on this. I wanna keep the, 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 all the colors that I have here. I don't wanna take anything out, so I'm gonna zero that out. Correct contrast, I usually set around 18, 20%, and dynamic, around 40%. So that's looking very good already. So we'll do a before and after. That's added a lot of punch to these clouds already. Okay, the next thing after Pro Contrast is that I generally add a little bit of warmth to the scene. So I can use either a skylight filter, which I prefer in most cases, or the brilliance and warmth. So I'm gonna go for skylight filter. Ah, amateur mistake there. What you always have to do, remember to do in Nick is when you wanna add a filter, make sure you hit add filter. Otherwise, when you hit another filter, it just cancels out your previous filter. So we'll go back to Pro Contrast. Bring this up. Okay, add filter, skylight filter, and it defaults at 20%. Already, this is now picking up a lot of punch now. Uh, so we do a before and after. You can see how that's really lifted the sky. We've got a lot of nice warmth and color in here. And uh, it's, it tends to lift the, uh, the tones in the foreground as well. Yeah, it's brought this grass out here in the foreground beautifully. So I'm really happy with that. Now there is one thing that Nick does tend to do. It inputs noise when you use these filters, which is annoying. Hopefully um, the new owners will address that in future versions. But uh, so what I'm gonna do is okay that, and I'm gonna take that noise out using Define 2. It's another little feature in Nick. So we go into the palette here, hit Define 2. And let's take it up in this a dark area of the sky so we can do before and after down here on this screen. So yeah, that's taken the noise out beautifully on that. So let's okay. So there you have it. So all I have to do now is to flatten the image. So up to layer, flatten image, and then I'm gonna save that. And then it'll revert back into Lightroom. There's our final image. So as you can see, it's only taken me a few minutes to make this image pop. So I hope this answers some of your questions that you've been posting. And fear not, if you want more information about in-depth processing techniques, we're gonna be covering that in future videos. So what I've done for you is I've created a little slideshow at the end of this video showing a raw file and then the finished image that really pops. Just a little collection of images that I think illustrate this point of the techniques that we've covered here today. Now for more information, make sure you check out our website and subscribe to our newsletter. And thanks for joining me here today.